some blonde. Coincidence running into you accidentally like that. Especially as we had parted forever three months ago. You know it wasn't a coincidence. If I didn't, you telephone if you wanted to see me. I was afraid you might be in. I didn't really want to see you, Clayton. So you came straight to my hotel. You're broke, aren't you? I'm not. Your show closed in New Orleans after 12 weeks of bad business in the South. With me every payday is Christmas Eve. I tuck something into my stock. Something... Something besides the the prettiest legs I've ever seen.
your position? I came because I was blue and tired and a little lonesome. And something else that I'm going to tell you about later. It's almost ridiculous the way I love you. Not ridiculous. The apartment's still waiting for you. Everything the way you want it, on a roof, overlooking the river and Long Island, quiet and far away. No more work. No more shows that go on the road. No more midnight trains. Good coffee. Peace and a personal maid. Not to mention me. And the name on the door would be? Your own name. Why not Mr. and Mrs. John Smith? They use that a lot, I believe. Oh, Claire. Wouldn't ever be Mr. and Mrs. Clayton Savile, would it? How naive and old-fashioned. Well, I happen to think that that's important. And any woman who says she doesn't is lying. unable to consider any prospect of life without the old ring and the minister and here comes the bride and all the rest of the mid-Victorian trouble. Them but gentlemen. How many people do you know who are happily married? Plenty. For instance? Oh, I could name plenty. You aren't a man. Don't be idiotic. There are men in the world who are happily married. Usually for the third time. And some people stay now. The human race has many bad habits which it lacks the courage to break. In spite of all your epigrams, I am still insist that intelligent people are marrying. Poor fool. They realize the dangers ahead, but close their eyes and smugly tell each other, it won't happen to us. We're different. Can you be so bitter, so hard and cynical? I'm bitter because I love you. Hard because, because I am determined not to be too unhappy. Cynical because I realize the chances are against it. You don't know what love is. Oh, yes, I do. All my arguments against marriage are arguments in favor of love. I know your next line. I've heard it before. Marriage destroys love. Right. Marriage means possession. A possession which is fatal to romance. Right. Nothing that you own is as perfect as when you wanted it. You're quite right. Appreciate so horribly, you or me? Both of us. Oh. The institution of marriage is outdated. Because it was designed for the different circumstances of life and conduct than those under which we live today. Now, you think that's all theory, don't you? But for years I've been watching men and women I like wreck their lives in this, this silly business of marriage. Do you, um, do you remember Buddy Harriman? <laughs> Shot himself six months after his wedding day. And, uh, and Johnny Barker. Do you remember when he was so crazy about that girl that he couldn't see straight? Aren't you 
choosing a few unfortunate examples. Now, ask yourself this question. How many people do you know who would do it again if they had their lives to live over? Oh, come on, tell me just one woman you know who hasn't said it in those very words. I'd rather concede that you'd won the message once. See stupid tradition robbing me of what I want most in the world. What you want most in the world? I do love you, Claire. I'll make you happy if you'll only give me the chance. And you know in your heart you love me too. Or you'd never have come here tonight. Don't say any more. I have something to tell you. I'm going to be married. I don't believe it. I was just saying that to prevent yourself admitting that you love me. It's true. Married tomorrow. Tell me all about it. Going to marry a boy I went to school with. You're going back to Texas? Not right away. He gets here tomorrow. How? How did this all happen so suddenly? It isn't sudden. We've been boy and girl sweethearts ever since I can remember. When I left home to go on the stage, he asked me to marry him. I had these huge ambitions. They've all gone to pot. <laughs> and he was very fine about it. He told me how much he loved me. And that he always would. If I ever wanted to give up the stage and come back home, he'd be waiting. And you were to? Last week. I got tired of everything. I told him I was coming home. I see. And he, impetuous young lover, leaped on the train and is flying to your feet. <laughs> He'll stand on his own feet in any company. He's made a real place for himself. Uh, don't tell me he's the mayor of the town. Well, he's district attorney of his county. And he's one of the coming men of his state. Well. Isn't that splendid? He gets here tomorrow. We're going to be married right away. That's all. That isn't all. You haven't mentioned that you love this man you're going to marry. I do love him. No, you don't. You love me. I did love you. Oh, I hate myself when I think that I came here tonight half hoping that you love me enough to forget your modern theories. And you... You're only covering up your own selfishness. All right, I'm selfish. I'll love you all my life. But I won't put your head and mine into a noose that would tighten and choke us as soon as we found that we were together because we... because we had to be. Very well, then. That settles it. I'm going home. Please don't throw your life away. 
You mean don't throw it away on him. Throw it away on you. If you put your arms around me and kiss me, you couldn't go. Are you going to marry another man? Yes. No, you can't. You know you love me. I fought this world a long time. Now I want someone else to do the fighting for me. Someone, my husband. You won't be that. So I'm marrying a man who adores me. I'm running away from the doubt and uncertainty and the problems of a woman who isn't found. You can't love me and talk like that. Don't go yet, please. It's much better that I go. We'll only argue and make ourselves very unhappy. Oh, I'll be good. I won't mention the matter again. Sure. There are two or three little things I'd like to talk to you about anyway. <laughs> We're like a couple of children saying goodbye for the first time. Would you let me take you home? No. At least let me come down to the door with you. I've gotten through these three farewells. I won't risk a fall. Goodbye, Kate. You don't know each other? 
Well, there are three or four people in New York I haven't met. <laughs> this isn't Texas, you know, Jim. <laughs> Here's your bag. Oh, uh, uh, bring them into the lunchroom. Yeah, I've got to get my breakfast. How about it, you two? Hungry? I'm sorry. Well, I've had coffee. Well, have some more. <laughs> Where is the lunchroom? <laughs> Nonsense. Now, you two are coming to my apartment. It's only around the corner on Park Avenue. Why, sure, that's great. Uh, come on, Porter. You know, down our way, it's not considered fashionable to live so close to the depot. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> uh, but uh, now what's the procedure? To get married at once. Jim, not today. I've waited a long time for you to make up your mind, honey. I'm not going to let you change it now. But I'll have to buy a dress. A wedding dress. Well, all right. I'll spare you a half hour for that one dress. Then Martin will take charge of it. Hmm? Well, uh, let me see. I have it. Suppose we say, uh, 12 o'clock at the city hall for the license. Then, uh, the wedding ceremony. After that luncheon, well, it'll be dinner time by then. And then dinner right here in my apartment. Champagne, rice, and everything that goes with it. What do you say? How does it sound? Eh? Sounds great to me. <laughs> what do you say, honey? Oh, nice. Oh, what is the newest and smartest hotel in town where the bridegroom can get into his best clothes? Oh, don't worry about that. I uh, reserved a room for you at the uh, Park Plaza. Okay. Is it the nicest? It's the best. And the best is none too good on an occasion like this. Yes. 
to have a few words with him. Well, what about? My name is Dugan. I'm the hotel detective. Open the door, please. Well, what's the meaning of that? You'll have to vacate the room. What? It's ready to someone else. Why, it can't be. I took it this morning for a week. There must be some mistake. It's ready. Come on, don't argue. Hey, what does this mean, anyway? The dame. That's what it means. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yes? Is uh, that the bathroom? Why, yes. Say... Come on out, baby. You're all washed up. Why, you... Now you stand still. I said come out of there. Claire, hey, what the devil does this mean? Jim, who is this man? What does it mean? I'll tell you, Innocence. It means it just ain't that kind of a hotel. Hey, I demand an apology at once or I'll break your neck. And this lady is my wife. <laughs> Take it easy, Texas. Take it easy. So, she's your wife, eh? Well, well, well. I thought you'd say that. She is, I tell you. Oh, dry up. I saw her pick you up down in the lobby. Oh, you fool, you blockhead. <laughs> Come. All right, Gus. These folks are checking out. Take this stuff. You can't get away with this. Keep your hand. Wait a minute, Gus. Where are your manners? This is a high-class hotel. Now get this, you two. I'm giving you a break. Just five minutes to pack. Going to hand me any more arguments? Yes, we're staying right here. Please, Jim. I wouldn't stay here for all the money in the world. It's really all too terrible. Thanks, lady. Okay, Tex. Now, just a minute, Claire. Jim, please, please. All right, dear. We'll go. Please get out. All right. I'm going. Now let me give you a little tip. This ain't so terrible. It's happened to a lot of guys. You got into the wrong place at all. Get out of here. There are a lot of nice little hotels, ain't choosy. Ask any taxi driver. Ask her. There, there, dear. Don't let it worry you. To kill that clumsy fool. Don't do anything more about it. Let's just forget it. And get out of here as quickly as we can. Why does it have to happen tonight? I'm so sorry, honey. But it's all over now. And tonight's just beginning. Let's forget. Well, I can't quite promise that. Rhinelander, 19808. What are you going to do? I'm going to see that this remembers Mr. James Bradford until it falls apart. Oh, but Jim, I asked you to please uh, not... Please, darling. Come in. What is it, Walter? The man in 212 wants to see you, sir. Name's Bradbury. Certainly, show him right in. Glad to know you, sir. Good evening. This is Mrs. Bradbury. How do you do, Mrs. Bradbury? Won't you be seated? Oh, yes, indeed, Mr. Bradbury. I'm always glad of the chance to meet my guests personally. You'll enjoy your stay with us, I hope. I am not. Why, Mr. Bradbury, what's the trouble? Ten minutes ago, I was ordered to leave my room by a ruffian who said that he was your house detective. Mr. Dugan? That's his name, Dugan. Why, I'm sure there must be some mistake. You bet there's a mistake. And the biggest mistake this hotel ever made. Come, can't be as bad as all that. 
you tell me just what happened tonight? Mrs. Because Bradbury and I were married today. We came back to the hotel. Not ten minutes later, this Dugan forced his way into my room and using the vilest insinuations about Mrs. Bradbury, ordered us to leave the hotel. This is shocking, Mr. Bradbury, shocking. Bonner, I'm District Attorney of Boone County, Texas, and I know law. I can sue you for $100,000. A hotel like this wouldn't dare let the case go to trial. Oh, of course you wouldn't do that. Of course I would. Unless an apology is made to Mrs. Bradbury at once. Oh, by all means, Mrs. Bradbury. Uh, I, I, I trust that you understand, Madam, how... how dear I regret this unfortunate occurrence. Uh, personally, and for the hotel, I offer you my... Most sincere and humble apologies. Thanks. I know you need it. Uh, just a minute, Claire. Just a minute. Uh, that won't do. Not until that detective has gone down on his knees and begged her pardon. Why, of course, Mr. Bradbury. Naturally. <clears throat> Send Dugan to my office at once. Uh, Dugan will badly apologize. And of course, I should do everything in my power to redeem this unfortunate obligation. Oh, Mr. Lambert, I wonder if you would care to complete your honeymoon as our guest. The official bridal suite will be vacant tomorrow. No, thank you. Not after tonight. Oh, quite so. I, I see quite so, madam. Come in. You uh, sent for me? Dugan, for your stupid, bungling conduct in breaking into room 212, I want you to apologize to Mrs. Bradbury unconditionally and at once. Wait a minute. You want me to apologize to her? Or what? Because you're a thick-headed fool. Mr. Bradbury has been good enough to regard your error in a favorable light. He is willing to accept an apology from you to Mrs. Bradbury in face of a suit for $100,000 in the favor of discharging you in his presence. Wait a minute. Now let me get this straight. Dugan, you do as I say. Take it easy, Mr. Bonner. This guy ain't gonna sue you for no hundred grand. Oh, I won't wait any longer. I'll file suit in the morning. No, no, wait, Mr. Bradford. I'll discharge this man. No, you won't. I'll keep my job and he'll keep his mouth shut about the whole affair. Please, Jim, let's go. I can't stand this. I'll say you can't, cutie. If he sues the hotel, I can save you a hundred grand. I'll go on the stand and tell just why I threw them out. I know what I'm doing. When I bounced this pair, I had a right. That dame picked up Clayton Saville down in the lobby just before dinner. She spent the night in his apartments, and I can prove it. It's a dirty, filthy lie, and I'll jam it down your throat. Bradbury, please! You can order and save. This is a serious charge. You substantiate it once or I'll turn you over to the police. I can prove it by the bell, Captain. He saw her go up just after dinner. And I can prove it by Connor, the night watchman. He saw her go out right after daylight. Oh, you get out of here, polite. Excuse me, Mr. Bradbury. I'll attend to this outside. The swine. Claire, what is the meaning of all this? It hasn't any meaning. It's just a ghastly mistake. Well, then you weren't in the hotel last night. Why, I, uh... Well, were you? Please, dear, believe me. There's nothing I shouldn't tell. I'll explain everything some other time. wedding night. I'm sorry, dear. I got kind of mad, I guess. I knew you'd understand. Sure, sure, honey. Claire. 
I want to know the whole story. You won't take my word for it and let me explain later. And I'm not so upset. Why are you upset if there's nothing in it? Please. You haven't even said it's not true. What they meant is untrue. What they meant? Why are you quibbling? I'm not quibbling. I'm just trying to tell you the truth. Sit down, Claire. All right. Just let me make it easy for you. I want to ask a few questions. How long have you known this babble? Ever since I came to New York. How recently have you seen him? Last night. Then you did see him last night? Yes. What time? Eleven o'clock. For how long? Several hours. How long? Several hours, I tell you, I spent the evening with him. An evening that began at 11 o'clock? You don't understand. New York is different. I'm beginning to find that out. Don't you think it's pretty hard on me? You're trying to make out oh, the right. I'm not trying to make out anything, dear. I'm just trying to straighten us out so that we can be happy. I know that, Jim. I have this charge, too. Oh, uh, yes, of course. Then uh, that settles the matter? Why, certainly. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, may I use your office for a few moments? Mrs. Bradbury is still a little upset. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, please do, if you will. Thank you, sir. Just one more question. Were you in his room? Jim, I won't be questioned. Why not? Because I won't lie to you. I couldn't lie to you. Then you were in his room. Oh, this is all so ridiculous. If we must settle it now, won't you let me tell you the story? It'll make you understand all about it. Were you in that man's room? Yes. How long did you stay? I don't know what time I left. Well... Claire... Did he kiss you? Yes. Yeah. And did you kiss him? Oh, stop it, stop it. This man means nothing to me. If you don't want to answer my questions, I'll have to put some faith in what that man Dugan has said. Don't think that. Go ahead and ask your questions. But, oh, Jim, you've got to believe me. No, don't get excited. Just tell the truth, and I'll believe you. You will, Jim, about everything? Why, certainly. Now then, did you kiss him? Jim, how can you ask such questions? You've answered me. Claire, I can't believe it. Then why do you try to? Because I'm forced to. And did this Mr. Savile propose marriage to you? You're torturing me. Torturing you? That's funny. I was through with New York, with all the tawdry things I'd been set up on. 
and to tell him I was going back to the only thing I knew was real and vital, Eugene. And what were your relations, that he had a right to such confidences? He was my friend. I haven't had such an easy time of it here in New York. And when I was blue, he amused me. When I was tired, he encouraged me. It all sounds very sentimental and charming. Jim, you're a horror. I got everlastingly sick of fighting my own battles. I knew I wanted to be a normal, honest-to-goodness wife with a husband to look after me. So that's why you married me. I married you because I admired and respected you and because you assured me you'd always love me. The reason I went to see him last night was to tell him I was marrying you and to say goodbye to him forever. And so it took from 11 o'clock until daylight to tell him that you were going to marry another man. That's all. Nothing else happened. Nothing, no, nothing. I don't believe you. No, you don't believe me. You haven't believed one word I've said. Jim, I can't stand it. I can't fight with you. You're a district attorney. It's your job to make people seem guilty. Seem guilty? Oh. Let me have Mr. Clayton's saddle department, please. Quick, please. Hey, wait a minute. What are you going to do? You're going to meet Clayton's saddle. He'll tell you. Then you'll believe me. That's impossible. I wouldn't think of it. You owe me that much. I'm your wife, and even the murderer is allowed some defense. <laughs> Clayton, this is Claire. I want to see you. Yes, my husband and I. Thank you. We'll be up right away. But Claire... This morning you promised to love and honor me. You love me. I know that in spite of everything. But you're going to honor me because you owe me the chance to prove to you that I haven't betrayed you. Good evening, Miss Tree. Good evening. My dear, this is splendid, Doctor. My husband, Mr. Bradbury. Mr. Savile. Tom Bradbury. Delighted to meet you. May I offer my heartiest good wishes? Sir. Oh, my dear, what's the matter? You're trembling. Will you stop embracing my wife? Jim, please. Great, the terrible thing, Sam. You see, Jim and I are stopping at this hotel, and the house detective accuses me. I can't say it, I can't. I'll tell you. We were thrown out of the hotel because the house detective says that he's prepared to prove that my wife spent the night here with you. Oh, what a rotten thing to say. Now, look here. I own part of this hotel. I'll have that detective apologize and then discharge. Oh, never mind the detective. I'm the one who wants an explanation. Tell him about last night. Tell him every single thing. Yes, let's hear your side of the story. My side of the story? Oh, forgive me, I, I don't understand. A horrible accusation has been made. Please tell my husband just how innocent it all was. Why, yes, sir, of course, but... The side doesn't he merely ask you. I did, but her story's too ridiculous to believe. I want your explanation. My explanation? But, but why my explanation, Mr. Bentley? You didn't marry me. Clayton, I brought him here. I knew if you explained, he'd see that the whole implication is ridiculous. Now then, let's have the truth. I'm beginning to understand. Now, let me get this straight. Do you mean to tell me that on your wedding day, when a senseless accusation is made against the woman you promised to love and honor, you hesitate for one moment to believe her? When my wife admits that she spent the night in the room of a man who kisses her, then I reserve the right to her admissions constitute all that happened. Yet I'd rather take her word than the oath of any man I know. That sounds very smart, but I'm not a New Yorker. 
My ideas are different from yours. Oh, never mind that. Get to the point. I want your word of honor that you and Claire have been nothing but friends. Answer. Come on, I want your oath on the Bible. But Claire has been nothing to you. I'm sorry, I... I can't do that. And why not? There isn't a Bible in the tape. How can you joke like this when my happiness is at stake? I know it is, Claire. I know it. Only too well. Since you haven't a Bible, will you give me your word of honor as a gentleman? That you weren't her lover? Jim, please. Answer me. Please, Jim. But perhaps you tell me. Was he your lover? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, please, Jim. Please forgive me. Forgive me, forgive me. It's all such a ghastly mistake. Just to be sure there aren't any detectives there. Where are you going? To my own apartment. I'm like a bad penny. Always turning up. How'd you get in? I drive the dog. Oh. Back to your old trick. Why have you been dodging my telephone call? Because I didn't want to listen to any more of your propositions. out of the paper. It's about your anonymous. Naturally, I know all about it. Of course you do. But I... I thought that now you're free, you might listen to one more proposition. I'm not interested in your propositions any more now than I was before. My work takes up all of my time. Claire. Let's get that. What did you say? 
I said, uh, let's get married. But you don't believe in marriage. Oh, but I do. You do. Marriage is a noose that tightens around people's throats when they're together, because they have to be together. Oh, but sir, it, it isn't really. But marriage destroys love. Not with us. Well, different. You darling. <laughs> 